On the bulkhead of the USS Enterprise, the first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier in the world, is a plaque honoring the Greek philosopher Democritus, who lived nearly 2,400 years ago. He was first to suggest that all things were composed of particles which he called atoms, a Greek word for indivisible. The sharpest sword could not cut them, he said, nor could the heaviest hammer crush or break one of them. They were unseeable, indivisible. Unseeable, yes. Indivisible, no. They have recorded their presence and revealed their power in microphotographs caught at the moment of disintegration. In the heat and force of massive explosions, and in the wake of a ship. Out of the bursting core of the unseeable atom, scientists and engineers have released a source of energy surpassing anything ever before known or imagined. A boundless physical force with power to reshape the world and the lives of everyone in it, now and in the future. search for ways to release and control the energy that lies in the nucleus of the atom is one of the greatest detective stories of all time. Not until 1938 did things really begin to move. Then it seemed that the idea of nuclear power developed like an actual nuclear reaction. Particles of the idea struck the receptive minds of scientists, technicians, and engineers. They, in turn, gave increasing impetus to the expansion of the idea and the reaction is still continuing. Hundreds of inquiring and responsive intellects have contributed to the transformation of an atomic hypothesis into a physical reality that has brought into being true submersibles and surface ships that can keep to the seas for years without refueling. To call the role of names of men and women in many countries who have contributed to nuclear knowledge would be quite a task. Therefore, let us narrow our story to one spectacular area, the development of the nuclear navy. A major breakthrough in atomic science came in 1938 when Dr. Lisa Meitner and Professor Otto Hahn split the atom of uranium-238 in their laboratory in Germany. It would be 1942 before Enrico Fermi could demonstrate the possibilities of a self-sustained nuclear reaction in the United States. But before that happened, the nations of Europe were at war. The search for the secret of the atom's power was concentrated on the development of a bomb. When the war ended, the Navy and the newly established Atomic Energy Commission could then undertake what was to be a revolutionary project, the use of nuclear power to propel naval ships. In 1946, a group of naval officers and civilians were assigned to work on the Manhattan Engineer District's Daniels Power Pile Project at the Clinton Laboratories, now the Atomic Energy Commission's Oak Ridge National Laboratory, Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Senior member was Captain, later Vice Admiral, H.G. Rickover, a qualified submariner and engineer with a strong faith in both the practicality and necessity of atomic propulsion. His convictions and determination soon made him a dedicated and efficient spokesman for a nuclear navy. He became the driving force in the design, development, construction, and operation of nuclear propulsion systems for submarines and surface ships. The hopes of Captain Rickover and the Navy were encouraged when Chief of Naval Operations, Fleet Admiral Chester W. Nimitz, approved a program for the design and development of nuclear power. With the termination of the Oak Ridge Pile Project, Captain Rickover and his group returned to work with the Atomic Energy Commission. 
Serving as the director, Division of Naval Reactors, United States Atomic Energy Commission, and as assistant chief for nuclear propulsion, Bureau of Ships in the Department of the Navy, and with no precedent and no technology available for such an undertaking, he had to start from scratch. He had to conceive, design, develop a reactor in detail, and build and test the countless components and systems. Under his direction, the program brought in industrial participation. In 1948, the AEC contracted with the Westinghouse Electric Corporation for the development of a pressurized water reactor plant for the propulsion of a submarine. A land prototype of this reactor plant was constructed at the AEC's National Reactor Testing Station in Idaho. Construction began in August 1950, and the reactor was first operated at power on 31 May 1953. This was the first production of significant quantities of useful nuclear power in the world. The prototype was also used to train the crews which would operate the nuclear power plant. The nuclear navy needed highly trained and competent personnel to ensure the safe and proper operation of nuclear power plants. In 1951, the navy awarded a contract to Westinghouse for the design and construction of a similar plant for installation in the world's first nuclear-powered submarine, the USS Nautilus. Design and development were done by the AEC's Bettis Atomic Power Laboratory in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This laboratory is operated by Westinghouse for the Atomic Energy Commission. This is a simplified schematic drawing of a nuclear propulsion plant. This is the reactor, and this the steam propulsion machinery. The reactor, encased in heavy shielding, contains fuel elements of highly enriched uranium. Control rods of neutron absorbing material control the activity of the reactor as they are inserted or withdrawn. As controlled fissioning or splitting of uranium atoms occurs in the reactor, tremendous heat results. This heat is carried to a steam generator by highly pressurized water. Here, the heat is transferred to less highly pressurized water, which is converted into steam to drive the ship's propulsion turbine and turbine generator sets. The turbine generator sets provide all the electricity required aboard the ship. This is the system that went into the Nautilus. The keel for Nautilus was laid at General Dynamics Electric Boat Division at Groton, Connecticut on 14 June 1952 by President Truman. She was christened by Mrs. Eisenhower on 21 January 1954. From the very initiation of the Naval Nuclear Propulsion Program, it had drawn the fire of certain critics and skeptics. But the Atomic Energy Commission and the Navy's advocates of nuclear power had been strongly supported by the Joint Congressional Committee on Atomic Energy. On 17 January 1955, Commander Eugene Wilkinson, first skipper of Nautilus, sent the triumphant message, underway on nuclear power. To the non-believers who had questioned the practicality and reliability of nuclear power, Nautilus soon gave answers that more than answered the questions. During her shakedown cruise in May 1955, Nautilus steam submerged from New London, Connecticut to San Juan, Puerto Rico, a distance of more than 1,300 miles in 84 hours. This distance was 10 times greater than that previously traveled continuously submerged by a submarine. It was the first time that a combatant submarine had maintained such a high submerged speed, about 16 knots average, for longer than an hour. It was the longest period spent submerged by a U.S. submarine and the fastest passage between New London and San Juan by any submarine surfaced or submerged. 